Vladimir is a young Russian reporter. He just got accepted in a local newspaper. Vladimir wanted to prove himself to his editor, especially that he's been working hard to get this job. Vladimir knew that he needed a very good and unique story in order to prove himself to his boss. Vladimir contacted all the people that he knew to inform them that he needed an interesting story, so that they can call back when they have one. Vladimir received some calls from his friends with new stories, but none of those stories was interested to Vladimir. He wanted something new, something different. Vladimir didn't give up, and he kept looking for the story until one day, a friend called him to tell him that he had the unique story that Vladimir was looking for. Vladimir's friend told him that his neighbor, Valerie, had a very strange story happen to him in Norway. Vladimir asked his friend to set up a meeting with Valerie, and after a couple of days, Vladimir's friend called him and told him that Valerie was waiting for him in his house. Once he got the address, Vladimir went directly to Valerie's house. Valerie's house was small, but it was beautiful and full of life. Vladimir told Valerie that he knew from his friend that he had an interesting story, but he didn't give him any details. Valerie told Vladimir that he was willing to tell him the complete story under one condition. Valerie didn't want to mention his name, his wife's name, or his daughter's. Vladimir didn't have a choice but accepting Valerie's condition, and once he did that, Valerie started to tell him the story. Valerie said, All my life, I was an oil worker. I started working in the city years ago. I was young, strong, and handsome. I was making good money from work, so I used to have a lot of fun with my friends on the weekends. My life was that simple. Every day, I go to work, and in the weekends, I go to the bar with my friends, until one day I received a call from my mother who wanted to visit me in the city. It was strange for me because she never visited me in the city before. After one week of this call, my mother showed up at my door, and it only took me one day to find out what the real reason of her visit. Actually, my mother traveled all this way only to introduce me to a girl. At first, I thought it was a silly idea, but after a while, I said to myself that I shouldn't let my mother feel like she traveled all that way for nothing. I decided that I'll meet that girl for one time then. I'll tell my mother later that I didn't like her. When I told my mother that I didn't mind to meet with this girl, she was so happy. And within a couple of days, I found myself sitting on the table with this beautiful girl. My mother told me that she's beautiful, but she didn't tell me that she's this awesome. I discovered that by myself. Anna is the daughter of a farmer who lives near my mother, back home in our village. One day, my mother saw her mother in the market, and she knew that her daughter, Anna, is living in the city now. I was sitting on that table and feeling thankful for those two old ladies who arranged this meeting for me. In that moment, I changed my plan, and I decided to know more about Anna. I wanted to be more with her, so I ended up taking her number in order to arrange for another date as soon as possible. I was very happy with Anna, and she was happy with me as well. We were in love together, and soon we decided to get married. We went back to our village, and we had a great wedding there with our families. We lived happily together for years, and we didn't have any problems. We were thinking about having a baby at first, but after a couple of years of marriage, we decided to have a kid. One year later, Anna told me the unexpected news. She was pregnant. I didn't believe what I heard at first. I thought that it must be a joke, but when we went to the doctor together, it became clear to me that I'd be a father in nine months. I never saw Anna as happy as I saw her that day. This news gave her the life back, and the next nine months became the happiest in my life. My wife was always smiling, and she was very optimistic about life. She couldn't stop talking about what she'll do with this little baby when he or she sees daylight. After nine months, I went with my wife to the hospital to deliver the baby. I remember this like it was yesterday. In that day, my life changed forever. Everything was going normal until the doctor showed up and told me that my wife delivered a very beautiful girl. I was so happy hearing that, but when asked him what about my wife, he looked to the ground and said, I'm sorry, we tried our best, but we couldn't save her. I was shocked. I didn't believe what I just heard. Anna died. How can I live without her? She's the only beautiful thing in my life. I ran out of the hospital like crazy. I was running in the streets of the city. I didn't know where I was heading. At the end, I found myself by the river, and there I decided that I will not continue living in this world without my wife. I decided to take my own life by jumping in the cold water. I was about to jump when I saw her for the last time. She was there, in front of me, the love of my life, Anna. She looked at me and said, Don't leave our baby alone. Take care of her. I sat down on the ground and I started to cry. People on the street thought I was a crazy man, 
and I agree with them I was crazy at that moment. After all, I went back to the hospital to take my daughter. Anna was always talking about this moment. She was imagining us coming from the hospital with our little girl, but we never thought that we'd be arriving home without her. I named the girl Nina, like what her mother wanted. Living as a single dad with a girl in that age wasn't easy, so I asked my mother for help. She was visiting us as much as she can, but she couldn't be there always. After all, she had her own house. Every time my mother came to visit us, she was talking to me about remarrying, but I couldn't forget Anna, and I wasn't sure that I'd be able to love another woman after her. After two years, my mother died, and Nina became all what I had. By the age of three, Nina started to go to the school, and there she saw every girl with her mother. After she started going to the school, Nina was always asking me about her mother and why she isn't with us. I didn't know how to answer my daughter in that day. I decided that I should remarry, not because I could move on what happened with Anna, but because I thought Nina needed a mother. In the same time, I was starting a new relationship with a Norwegian woman called Frida. She was an engineer in one of our biggest oil companies in her country, and she came to our company to assist our engineers. Frida was speaking very good Russian, but she didn't know the city, so it was my job to show her around. Frida was bountiful, nice, smart, and a very successful lady. Besides all that, I felt like she also liked me. So I talked to her directly. I didn't want to lay at her, so I told her everything about me and Nina. Frida didn't mind to be a member of our family. She told me that she was very happy to know that I have a daughter because she likes kids, especially little girls. She also told me that she always wanted to be a mother and that she was thankful for us to give her this chance. Frida left the hotel that she was living in and moved in with us in this house. In the beginning, it took Frida and Nina a while to get to use for each other, but after a while, they became best friends. It didn't take Nina too much time to start calling Frida mom. At this time, I started to feel good again, and I thought that my problems would go away. After a couple of months, Frida told me that she had to go back to Norway. I asked her to move here and live with us, but she convinced me to travel with her. Frida told me that the quality of life in Norway is much better than here. Besides, the poor Nina had trouble communicating with other kids in her school. Frida told me that changing the place will help her as well. Frida also told me that she can find me a job in her company where I'll be well paid. I thought Frida was right, and I followed her plan. She told me that she'll send me and Nina the visa. After a month, I received my visa, but we didn't receive Nina's visa. Called Frida, and I asked her. She told me that it must be an error. She said that Frida should arrive any moment, and she asked me to leave her and travel by myself and that she can catch up with us later. I told Frida that I'm not going anywhere without my daughter. Suddenly, she got very mad at me and didn't understand why, and then she hung up on me. I didn't understand Frida's behavior. I tried to call her over and over, but she wasn't answering my calls. After a couple of days, Frida called me again. She apologized for what happened in the last call, and she told me that she'd done that because she missed me and she was waiting for me. She also told me at this day that Nina's visa is ready. Frida booked us tickets and sent them to us by mail. When we arrived at Frida's house, it was big and a nice house. The most beautiful thing in her house was the garden. Nina loved to play in that garden, and she made her only friend in that garden. Nina's friend was a rook. She played with him every day, and I still remember once she told me that this rook is only one who understands her. Frida was also happy, especially that Nina was playing the most of the time with her rook, and we had all had time to ourselves. But Frida changed when I started to spend more time with Nina and her rook in the garden. One day I wake up and I couldn't find Nina in the garden. I asked Frida. She told me that she went to her room. I went to Nina's room, but she wasn't breathing. My heart stopped and I started screaming until the neighbors called the police. I wanted to bury my daughter next to her mother, but Frida told me that they will not let me take the body with me. I didn't want to leave my daughter behind, so I decided to burn the body and take the ashes with me to Russia. The rook was there and he was screaming all the time. Once we were about to burn her body, the rook flayed over her head and he was screaming harder this time for it was like he was calling for help. It was strange to the doctor who stand next to me as well. The doctor went to check on the body, and the unexpected happened. Turned out that Nina was still breathing, and it was the rook was trying to tell us. It turned out that Frida tried to kill my daughter by poisoning her food, but she miscalculated the dose. Later, we discovered that Frida was a crazy woman, and she wanted me all for herself. That's why she tried to kill my daughter. Frida was taken by the police, and they helped to get back to our home city with the Rook, 
who's playing with Nina now in my garden. Valerie's story was very shocking to Vladimir. When he published, it became the local story in the newspaper, and Vladimir could prove himself to everyone in his newspaper.